going to try bring you through energy zone as best I can in as short as time as possible. Try to give you an insight into how it works and what makes it different and try to answer as many questions as possible because we get a lot of um, generally the same type questions. Isn't it just another manifold? Isn't it just a, a strange low loss header or a low loss header with multiple connections? Or isn't it, you know, just a, a smaller buffer? I think when you look at what I'm going to show you, you're going to see that in fact, yes, it has all the features that you should have from each of those devices, but in fact, it's a completely different device. So let's get on and, and see what you think. The Energy Zones has uh, three chambers, three distinct chambers. There's top chamber, middle and bottom. We would refer to them as the flow, bypass and return chamber. But as well as that, there is a, a V-shaped baffle on the left hand side, which it's probably just shown here as a, a diagrammatic um, representation of what it does. And uh, and also there is a neutral point created by the open bypass, which is 100% open bypass at the right hand side of the of the three chambers. And, uh, and then there are extraordinary connections that connect into the neutral point that can be used to introduce heat, to take away heat, to introduce uh, uh, pressure vessels and cold feeds and whatever like that. So let's move on. If we look at the basic system that most people would think is the way to install the unit, and it can install the unit this way, it isn't at all the um, what you need to, in, to to understand about the system because you can do a lot more. But if I take the simple form, I have a zone pulling water from the top chamber, heads out to do its work based on pipe sizing and pump sizing, and and then the return comes back in, goes into the bottom chamber. That water is picked up by the boiler, heated by the boiler, and can be delivered, say, into the top chamber. So we got a cycle where the boiler flows through the flow chamber from left to right, if, it, if the boiler is arriving at the left, travels across through this critical area here, the neutral point, uh, where, you, again, as I said, you could join your expansion vessels, coal feeds, and, and whatever, and then passes through that and heads back to where it came from. So as it's traveling on that journey, a given zone can take that uh, undiluted heat away to whatever um, zone it's heating. A second pump can take it to what second zone and so on. You can have two or 10 or whatever zones you want, depending on the manifold you're using. So uh, at the same time, a boiler could deliver in at the right hand side. So you could be taking the water from the bottom chamber and delivering it through this pipe, reverses back on itself when it meets this baffle, and as it turns back, it offers the heat to each of the zones before it again meets the neutral point and could head back. An interesting thing to note is that you could take a boiler flow in and say the top left hand corner, and you could take the same boiler return from the bottom right hand corner, vice versa. You could go in at the top right hand corner and go to the left. You can also, in situations that you're going to see in a while, introduce the heat into the middle chamber, and I'll explain that, from left or right. And you could take the return back uh, to boilers from the middle chamber, from left or right. Uh, so it's completely versatile. And sometimes when people ask me a question, it would seem as if I'm avoiding the answer because they're telling me, is this what to do? And I, my answer is yes, but not necessarily. You'll see when we move on, even though it sounds complicated, I'm sure just now, you're going to find that it's an extremely simple concept. So. When people first introduced low loss headers, it was to prevent back end burnout. The idea all those years ago was that boilers were not made, were not designed to deal with condensation. So if you put in an oil boiler or a gas boiler and, it was, and, the, and the flue gas is condensed inside, natural gas or LPG gas would form hydrochloric uh, acid uh, in, in, the, in, uh, in very dilute form in the flue, flue gases, and also oil would form kind of sulfuric um, acid that would actually eat through the metal. So the idea was to preheat the return water to stop the boiler condensing internally and to protect the boiler from back end burnout. Back end burnout was where the metal would be attacked by the flue gases. So uh, to now say that a low loss header causes condensation is a complete contradiction to what it was originally introduced to the marketplace for. So 
the features of a low loss header are tremendous because you're isolating the boiler circuit and giving the boiler a chance to have a full flow all the time and you can have the zones working in their own situation but the negative side is that it affects the efficiency of the of the boiler one and it dilutes the flow output temperature too so you end up with um, two compromises to get your benefit if you look at a diagram that represents what's going on inside in the manifold uh, you'll see that it, um, the, again the three chambers and you can see how the bypass is 100% open and uh, but in reality also the two and a half inch pipe equivalent that's formed by this chamber here our 65 mil pipe internal diameter would say 74 outside uh, is fed by this say uh, just suppose a one inch round pipe comes to a square pipe or a one inch round pipe from the right hand side passes through this pipe here meets at this point the water having left the boiler is at its hottest and because it's at its hottest it's inclined to lose air by far easier because it hits the middle of the baffle come from this side it bursts uh, into and, and destroys the laminar flow or if it comes from the left hand side it flows outside behind and in front of the v-shaped baffle and therefore again destroys the laminar flow all of this water is now turbulating here and the air rises to the top and that's where it's captured by the unique little baffle so we can swap here so that actually pulls the air uh, causes the air to leave if there's so much air in the system just when you start off first some of it will pop over this little um, uh, blocking baffle here and will get trapped in the top right hand corner and then very simply find its way back around the side and off out the vent so you find it very very quickly the system vents itself and will vent itself every time the water passes they uh, will we'll go through the the different chambers in a while but i just want to tell you that at the top of the flow chamber just like at the top of the, the bypass chamber and certainly at the top of the return chamber there is an area that has very little water activity and the idea there is that any air coming back from the zones is captured here any air coming back from in from the boilers is captured here or could be from zones and then there are little um, purpose gaps at the side plates here not big enough to allow any uh, significant form of drifted heat to move but enough so little air bubbles can rise up and keep venting to the top and keep reaching the outlet so that they each chamber in its own right acts as a deaeration device which is completely unique again in the marketplace so you can see here so the theory of flow comes in from the left just suppose it can go around the v-shaped baffle lose its air carry on from left to right over and it could go back to the right to the boiler if that's what you piped it if that's the way you piped it and it could go around passing each, each zone and offering its supply to its zone before it heads back to the left and likewise a boiler could flow in from the right turn back on itself and travel across again through the deaeration mechanism down and go left or right so um, it doesn't matter whether you put the boiler heat in from the left or heat from the right but you're going to see in a while you can do a lot more but let's go there so again you can see it's common sense if i have a by far bigger area whether it be a bucket of water a barrel of water or a bigger pipe and the water is traveling slowly the air will rise to the top the design of the manifold capitalizes completely on the amount of distance between the baffle and the input and the air outlet to let that air get so that it's released immediately uh, no matter where, what direction it's coming from the three chambers that i'm referring to is just a way of identifying them but can i tell you that it, it's not necessary this is where some of the confusion arises if you look at the arrow at the top left hand corner it's facing into the left so you could put a flow in here and you could put a flow in the top right hand side and you could put a flow in here likewise you could actually put a flow into t1 at the top here as well uh, uh, just to tell you the symbols l1 two three at the left hand side r one two three common sense right hand side one two three t one t two three three and then the zones a one and two b one and two c one and two so if you have the arrows coming in here bringing in heat the heat could be taken away by a1 or b1 or c1 and returned back by a2 b2 c2 to head back to the respective boilers but watch the arrows if i decide i don't want to put boilers at the side i want to put boilers underneath i want to collect heat in from a boiler into a1 feeding its return back out of a2 i want to collect heat from a second boiler b1 
and C1, and then the respective uh, B2 and C2 returning the water to those boilers. I now still have heat in the top chamber, and I can feed my heat off out to zones to the left of the manifold or the right of the manifold. I could, for example, have a high temperature hot water cylinder or um, dom domestic hot water supply over here, which would be undiluted hot water going off out. And then if I want to put a mixing valve on the connections over here, I can say the flow here, return here, put a mixing valve in between the two. I can now um, have a lower temperature or weather compensated temperature heading off to my system or to another manifold, which we'll go through again in a while. So, don't be confused. Just because it's a identified flow chamber and we're saying the water can go in here, the idea to remember and take this from the very start, if you select a given chamber to be the flow input, the hottest input, you take your flows to the zones from there. If it happens to be this chamber, then that's your flow chamber. But it would make huge sense, of course, that to keep the flow chamber at the top of the manifold, and that will make more sense as I move on. So what I'm saying is if you were to pivot it around 180 degrees, this chamber would be at the top. You would then regard that as the flow chamber. You'll see in a while. So one of the very useful things about having all of the, let's call it the distribution tees and all of the boiler inputs and everything in one location is that with your fingertips carefully if the water isn't too hot or with a thermal imaging camera or with a um, some kind of a temperature measuring device, you can see what's going on in the system. What's extremely useful is that you can uh, hold on to a flow and return going to a zone and see what the delta T is across, or you can compare a given zone to another zone. And so you can end up with um, a very, very good information coming back by just literally removing the insulation cover that comes with the unit and, see, and just touching the surface or measuring the temperatures at the surface. Great insight into the so here's an idea of what's going on. It looks like you wouldn't be touching this manifold with your fingertips, but you can see the inch thick insulation that comes all around it here, that contains the heat extremely well. And then you can see where the high temperature waters come in. We've got 65.9 coming in, uh, being taken away by the zones. You see the pumps throwing away the heated water. And then you can see the returns come in where they cool the return chamber and where the last chamber, or the last return, this one, uh, A2 is actually bringing in the coldest water because it's just been turned on. And so that's in the process of heating. That water has been offered back to the boiler, which incre uh, increases the efficiency of the boiler by increasing the delta, delta T across the heat exchanger. So we would class the unit with two zones at the bottom as energy four, three zones on the bottom energy five, four zones on the bottom energy six because you have four plus left plus right is six, three plus left plus right is five, two plus left plus right is four. And what the drawing shows what's going on inside in the manifold. So if you order an energy four, it's going to have uh, four connections looking down. Energy five will have five sets of uh, connections or three zones looking down. Now, people say you can't beat a buffer for heat pumps and for um, proper stratification and whatever. I don't think that's the case. If you look at a buffer, invariably there's going to be radiated heat from the top surfaces down through all of the water. You're going to have to heat a huge volume of water. You're going to have to buy a huge buffer, which costs a lot of money. You're then going to have to locate the buffer into some part of the house takes up a huge amount of space. Whereas ultimately all you want is the water that's coming back from the zone the coolest water being provided back to your heat sources and the hottest water being captured so that you're bringing in from your heat sources and driving out. Well, guess what? That's exactly what's happening in the energy zone with all the, without all the expense, without all the room, and in a very, very simple way. You can see the hottest water will be collected in the top chamber. The bypass chamber, again, we'll go through that in better detail, but uh, is, is, um, can be used for either purpose, depending on how you pipe it. And the bottom chamber, um, is the coldest water which increases the efficiency of your appliances. So just again, yes, they have the same kind of uh, advantages, but the difference is phenomenal with regard to cost, location, and how effective the stratification actually is. So just one added little feature. If you did have, say, a gas boiler or any boiler on the right hand side, the left hand side, and it's feeding heat in, you could feed it into this port because that arrives at the top chamber. So it, like it could come from here, it could come from here. But just suppose on the right hand side you had a solar input or you had a solid fuel system that drifted heat into the system and you wanted, and there wasn't enough 
pump force to reach the far zone so if the water wasn't moving fast enough you could shunt the water around the manifold by only shunting that flow water so instead of the first instance with a low loss header where you're trying to push water back through the boiler to, to increase um, the distribution of heat across it what you're doing here is you're only shunting the hottest water and you're leaving the lovely diluted or undiluted cold return water available for the boiler so you can have all the benefits of the shunt in this scenario without disturbing the efficiency of the boiler if you decide to put mixing valves on any zone it's not an issue you simply take your T in this example T looking backwards two elbows at the back back out onto a mixing valve double elbow here means that you can put a mixing valve protruding out or standing out from the initial pipe and so you can have your mixed water going back down to your zone and your return um, reduced temperature water in this zone or in this zone but of course that valve could be moved to this zone that zone could be put here in fact you could have a mixer over here so again it just makes it extremely easy to decide multi temperature systems by depending on where you want to put your uh, mixing valves now a critical point as everyone knows about a heating system is the neutral point the neutral point is where you have to introduce your cold and take away your air so if you have a situation where you have an open system but you have very low attic space and you want no pitching whatever because the these two sockets here on a standard unit are only three inches or 75 mil apart the cold can come down into a heat lock loop to prevent any heat drifting back up into the tank because that would have destroyed the uh, it would have heated the contents of the tank the water would evaporate fresh water come in and now you've got rust building up in the system which people take for granted but there's no need for it if it's piped this way the energy zone offers that solution you, you minimize the amount of temperature differential in the water so that it's very little evaporation compared to a straight cold feed down your vent point is at the top of the air capture device inside here so again you get all your air duration done if you are using a sealed system with a pressure vessel this is the perfect location where the target is here to connect your pressure vessel it can be through this connection through the center connection it can even come across on the other side and come back through the, the this let's call it square pipe uh, continuing on the round pipe from this side and it can even go in where you combine your uh, event and your pressure vessel here because they all reach this critical area just around here where your system neutral point is on your return water your return so uh, sorry your cold feed water or filling water can be introduced into the uh, perfect place to cause perfect aeration because you're pushing water in the cold water comes in and pushes the air out couldn't be simpler it comes from left right it can even come down in here it'll fill back a brown push the air out or it can come in here push the air out so again a very unique way of putting pressure vessels filling points or cold feed and expansions together uh, in, in, a, in a much much simpler much more common sensible way it does not mean that you couldn't put the cold feed into another connection should you decide to do that but this is just one way of doing it very well many people choose different ways we don't say they're right or wrong people have their own ways of using it and we really have uh, come across so much good information from installers who have found their own methods to use the energy zone and we've learned an awful lot from other people's um, experience so if you are using it please keep us informed we'd love to know how you get on if you're putting a boiler at the left hand side you have multiple options one is where you feed through the boiler say for instance from the bottom left hand connection l3 or you could in fact it makes no difference come from uh, l2 because l2 is fed if the zones are pushing water up here it will ultimately push up through this gap it's feeding across you've got the exact same scenario to my mind it's much better to use the bottom connection because you have less chance of meeting the bypass water but you might decide to do that for example if your boiler was a solid fuel appliance or an uncondensing a boiler a boiler it might be um, better to take it from the middle connection but both of them will work in any case uh, likewise you can put a boiler on the right hand side and it can feed into uh, r1 or on the flow or it can go all the way over to t1 and your returns can go up from an option of uh, your uh, r2 or r3 makes no difference um, if you are putting boilers underneath the manifold to collect heat from multiple boilers could be one or two with a zone this side or and a zone that's it or it could be three boilers taking all the heat away from the right hand side and remember you're not confined to one inch connections that's just our standard units but you can get units any size 
uh, we make units for in the strangest of shapes to suit boiler houses and it can be very very useful instead of trying to figure out how you're going to put major size pipes all over the place to try to configure it we make the manifold to suit where the pipes are coming from and we do our pipe work, complicated pipe work internally so that the installation is much much faster much much cheaper and much more efficient so you could so have two boilers underneath one on the left two boilers underneath one on the right um, Again, multiple options makes no difference. You could so as well have boilers on the wall and now look what I've done. I've, ro I've rotated the manifold 180 degrees and now I'm bringing my boiler return water. What was the flow chamber is now being used to collect return water, pulls it up into the boiler. The boiler vents the system, pushes the uh, uh, hot water down into this chamber which is now the top chamber which I said the earlier was the return chamber but now you can see where the confusion could arise so I have heat coming from boiler 1, boiler 2, boiler 3 all being taken away from the right hand side uh, again just a very simple straightforward way of multiple wall hung boilers and the same applies on the if you want to put boiler on the right hand side of the manifold and you want to take the heat away from the left here's how you do it straightforward if I'm taking zones from the unit, I can take a zone from the top, another option, and I can go down to it, or I could take a zone from uh, the where, where I should, where the boiler went in before, on uh, L1. And in fact, I could have this, the dotted line here could be a zone, the dotted flow, dotted return, and the solid line could be another zone. So you could have a zone here, another zone here with two separate turns, three, four. So I could have four zones in this situation and still have my boiler coming in here or two boilers coming here, it makes no difference. Uh, likewise, I could repeat, but it's just the same thing on the opposite side. I can take my zones from the right hand side and I can take my zones underneath. Again, just showing versatility. So what I was saying to you about the bigger units, here's an example of a much bigger unit that was made where the um, Flown returned left here and went away to conventional motorized valve based commercial application, an existing system. There was an existing boiler that we uh, collected the pipework from to bring into a place that located exactly where the pipework was in the boiler house. We then introduced uh, four two inch sockets to take two 180 kilowatt, no, I'm wrong, 200 kilowatt boilers in, 180 in total. Uh, so 90 kilowatts each coming in here, flow into here, flow into here, one boiler uh, uh, for, from the boilers and then return back to one boiler here, return it back here. And we actually even had a place here for pressure vessels and for filling points and whatever. We also had an option over here to um, put on heat pumps so the system is completely future proofed. Um, so no hassle with, it, with regard to making the manifold to suit the job rather than trying to figure out how to put the job together with bits and pieces. Um, again, here's an energy zone with 10 zones out. It was used for a very large log burner over here and two condensing boilers on the other side. So again, what would be a very complex job made extremely simple. Um, and then of course we do make panels as well. So for this job, there was need for three temperature sensors, flow temperature, we went to the bypass temperature because there was a heat pump involved and we went to the return temperature uh, and you see how that would work in a while. So we made the panel to suit the manifold and it was all delivered in one go. So it just made the plumbing and the wiring work hand in hand, very neat, very fast installation. We then go up and we make boiler house modules. And here you can see four 115 kilowatt wall hung boilers. But what you don't see is that there's provision also in this unit for heat pumps for the future. So this was a large supermarket complex where we took the heat um, a pipework, the original pipework, wherever it came across the roof from your handling units, and we made the manifold to suit it exactly. So it was a very fast changeover. Uh, it's been in there years, no callbacks, just absolutely works, and the savings were phenomenal. Uh, but again, good to know that you can actually go to any size job whatsoever. There's literally no limit to the size job we can uh, handle. Now, I want to show you a number of drawings and it's going to show you things about the manifold that you might not have considered first but it just shows I'd ask you this question tell me how you could do a job as effectively at this as this without a manifold in the first instance we have a heat pump and guess what we're putting the flow from the heat pump into the middle connection now, isn't that strange it feeds across in the middle and the gas boiler is in the middle connection returning back so let's see what's happening if I turn 
the heat pump, the coldest water in the bottom chamber comes down, it comes up and it goes in through the middle chamber. And because it's available where these pumps are drawing from the top chamber, it pulls the water down from the top chamber. So even though it's feeding in in the middle chamber, it pulls the water down so the zones work away perfectly well, even though the heat pump is feeding in to the middle chamber. The returns are collecting in the bottom chamber and that's being fed back to the heat pump. So now we move on to stage two. In this scenario, we, the heat pump is not working and we have our gas boiler feeding from the middle chamber. So that now we can take the water up, heat it by the boiler and then put it across into the top chamber. Again, feeds out to the zones, the returns come back, feed up through the bypass. It's a dynamic bypass, it'll allow water pass both directions obviously and then feeds back into the boiler. So the gas boiler will work away perfectly well and condense perfectly well because it's getting, you can see, sorry here, the color I should have told you here does not represent temperature, it's flow rate. So the darker the color, the more the flow rate. The lighter the color, as with situations like this, there's no water activity. It just, there's no reason for the water to move in there. So there might be a tiny bit of turbulence, but not we're talking about. Whereas the vast amount of the flow is flying out of the boiler here, coming through the pipe, being taken away by this zone and being taken away by that zone. Now we go to the very interesting one. We have the heat pump on and we have the gas boiler on. Let's say we have the heat pump taking the water from say 40 degrees to say 45 degrees, and then we feed it across the middle chamber. And I'll show you here, comes out of the, uh, um, and is directly taken by the gas boiler at 45 degrees, heated to say just about 65 or 70 degrees. So the boiler's efficiency is extremely good. The heat pump's efficiency is extremely good. And then the gas boiler heated water, having been preheated by the heat pump, is delivered to the zones. Comes back down and we design our zones to have the delta T that suits the boiler application. So we have our 40 degree water coming back from the zones and that's being taken back to the heat pump, preheated, sent over to the gas boiler, heated again. And you think, how could you improve on that? Well, watch this. We now want to go one step further. We want to have the heat pump running and we want the gas boiler running, but we only want high temperature water going to hot water. So we've got the pump sized for the hot water circuit to take all of the water that's leaving the gas boiler. So therefore, it's going to prioritize the hot water or the vast amount of, just suppose, the vast amount of water leaving the gas boiler. So now, the if I zoom in, you're going to see that the water is coming in from the heat pump comes across, heated by the gas boiler, but when it gets to here, it's drawn away by the zone for hot water. The hot water so is getting 65 or 70 degree or whatever I would set my boiler to. It's taking that water away and is allowing the cylinder to have full temperature. The cylinder return comes back in and it all carries on the same as before. Now we've got a superior system. In the meantime, the heat pump, if there is water available the heat pump, uh, from the gas boiler coming across, because I've sized my system to do that, then it carries on as well and feeds over on from that. Or the heat pump can pull water. If there's a vacuum created here, it can pull this water and this water or whatever is necessary, depending on how we design the job. I explained this to another um, at another time and uh, people got a complete wrong impression and caused uh, an awful lot of confusion. The manifold doesn't decide how much water is passing. The manifold doesn't decide anything. It's what the person designing the job decides he wants the configuration to do and the manifold makes it easy to put together. So there's no definite way to do anything. But this is a superbly um, efficient way of combining high temperature hot water, high temperature boiler and the heat pump all working with perfect um, symmetry, working with perfectly together. So. If I do want to use mixing valves, I could bring boiler uh, boiler water in, say, from the left hand side, and I could have full temperature water off the right. I could have a mixing valve taken on zone one and nothing on zone two, but I have full circuits. If I want to bring it in from the right hand side, I could have my heat coming in either here or here. Obviously, the primary way you bring it is into the top chamber and my return go back. Again, I could have a mixing valve here completely up to myself what I want to do. Um, and again, I could have um, mixed temperature coming into the manifold. So I might be coming from a higher source and deciding I want the manifold only to deal with a control temperature. And then I might have say an underflow circuit here. So I put a second mixing valve. And likewise with this one, I might have a high temperature system over here uh, and also um, feeding out to a mixed temperature circuit here. So where you put the pump, where you put the mixing valve decides what you want to do. 
the control of how you design the system is entirely in your hand. What's very important to know is that we're here all the time. If you're designing a system and you need any assistance, that's what we do. No charge. We'll, you contact us and we'll help you design your system and provide any schematics or whatever, depending how big the job is. If it's a very large job and needs a lot of work, we can negotiate a good price to make sure that you get it right. In the vast amount of situations where it's a straightforward system, like all of those ones, we just do it, there's no cost involved, and you've got a superb system with us taking responsibility that it'll work properly and you enjoying the improved reputation and the better jobs. So here is what I, one of the examples I'm referring to collecting heat from two boilers. You've got a place to have your pressure vessel, filling point, hot water, full temperature, a mixing valve delivering off over to a zone manifold. We have zone on the right and four zones underneath. Two of them weather compensated down, maybe one for underfloor, completely up to yourself. You might decide to um, have a different shape, but this is just an example. So. While we're at that, I'm just going to quickly show you the energy legs because the wiring of the energy legs um, allows for four zones, each with their own fusing. Each boiler has its own fuse and two boilers straightforward. Then there's a three amp fuse for general controls if you want to use it. There's a five amp fuse on the way in. There's a one amp fuse over there for this right hand side, which is completely available for auxiliary functions. An auxiliary function could be hot water priority. It could be that you want to use an extra boiler or an extra two boilers. It could be that you want to have an extra four zones. So this board can do so much. And again, it's just over a hundred quid. It's just like, why would you go about boxes of reels and bits and pieces of wires when this is so easy? Every zone has an LED, the mains has an LED, the auxiliary function has an LED. There's no back feeding. There's spare outputs from your auxiliary inputs. It's a, it deserves another conversation, but, um, but at the same time, very, very simple, very straightforward. So if you were to look at a combination of, say, two boilers onto a manifold with four zones and hot water priority, this is how you would go about it. I'm not showing the terms, I'm just showing this would look after the zones and, and pumps and room stats and whatever are cylinder stats. This would look after your boiler supplies and boiler switching. And this would look after your hot water priority. Just a way to do it. So just to finish up, we'll have a look at two boilers with the wiring, which say you have a radio circuit, hot water circuit, with maybe radio controls, you connect your radio receiver onto the energy legs, and now you've got a, a say bedroom circuit, hot water circuit, downstairs circuit, could be underfloor, whatever you decide. Um, here is a, another scenario where you have, um, now this, this would seem to be quite complex. It's actually um, used in training, a training college to teach apprentices. So you could have a return coming back from a solid fuel appliance, uh, which would go down through an injector T, put a loop to stop the cylinder back feeding and drifting heat away and losing it around the building, which is so standard with so many systems and it's off the wall. It's, most people are just wasting so much energy, wasting hot water by drifted heat. And then uh, the solid fuel can have an, a pump with it based on a thermostat location on the return if necessary. This pump, this pump will come on and cause the water to move at a much faster pace through the solid fuel when it comes up to temperature. At the same time, they have a condensing boiler. The condensing boiler is taking the coldest water. The solid fuel is dealing up this with, with this uh, nice warm water, which is above 55 to stop uh, condensation with inside the solid fuel. And you've got your zones. You've got underfloor heating, you've got radiators, and you've hot water. And you have a circuit as well to heat the hot water from your oil boiler or gas boiler, whatever. So again, if you try to do that job, taking all of those safety features and all of those ba uh, basic, very, very good um, design features into account without a manifold, I think you'd have your work cut out. And again, to see where the open vent is from the vent point, which is the uh, exact location it should be taken from the cold feed in that scenario would go down to supply the solid fuel with cold water in case something ever went wrong. And so you have an open pipe going through an open chamber, meeting an open expansion, all perfectly safe. Very, very simple. So quickly, the energy zone reduces the cost of good installation. It connections to the system for, oh, I didn't tell you this, sorry. You can have a temperature sensor here. You could have a temperature sensor here. You could have temperature sensors put in purposely if you want them in any particular location. You tell us what you want, we can do it. 
and then so it means that you've complete control over everything that's happening in the boiler area or further zones and um, just by literally um, at your own discretion so it greatly simplifies the design tell me it doesn't you connect your boilers to a rectangle you connect your zones to the same rectangle you can have multiple boilers you can have single boilers it's completely up to yourself if you put mixing valves in it controls the temperature in if you put mixing valves out it controls the temperature out connections uh, for open expansion or for pressure vessel or for cold feed uh, completely available and many other options we've gone very quickly through this so there's a lot more involved if you wish uh, connections for, as I say for the expansion and pressure vessels the uh, provides an unobstructed bypass how critical is that anyone who would know that a boiler should not have a resistance or a restriction on the flow through the reason is if you have say motorized valves preventing the heat leaving a boiler because some of them are turned off the boiler can't vacate the heat exchanger and because it can't it has to actually heat back on itself and it turns off based on inefficiency if the water has 100% bypass past zones that are not taking the boiler's heat and it immediately goes on an un uh, obstructed bypass directly back to the boiler stat now the boiler has a very good indication of what's going on in the system and it can decide if it does want to or doesn't want to uh, reduce its gas rate or whatever it wants to do but it has a so the manifold gives it by far better information back from the system and um, so you can have single boilers multiple boilers different boilers high temperature boilers low temperature boilers and they all work um, uh, together hand in hand uh, does dynamic flow and return you've seen that where they can actually pass both directions depends on how you design the job it can come down and feed into return or it can feed back up so, so it's a, a, again very very useful uh, connections for independent heating zones so if a zone is on it does not affect the next zone because the pressure in this chamber is exactly the same because of the neutral point is so open there's no difference so there's no momentum for the water to leave and head away if you were coming down to a zone and if the zone then rose up above you would always put non-return valves on the return connections the reason is if the upstairs zone was then cooling it would cause enough uh, momentum for the water to fall down which would pull more hot water with it the non-return valve on the zone return prevents that to happen and so uh, you have complete independence with zones if the pump is on the zone work if the pump isn't on the zone doesn't work one last thing just because you're using a pump on a zone does not mean that out beyond that pump you couldn't put a motorized valve or two or three motorized valves depending on what you're trying to do over here so this could be a central point where you're distributing out to multiple valves that then have independent um, zone control over at that point so again it's very very open it's not restricted in how you conceive your design the uh, isolated boiler return common sense you now understand it's the reason why systems are efficient or not if you've cold this water come back to the boiler and it's an efficient condensing boiler or heat pump it relies completely on what the energy zone provides and the energy zone provides as part and parcel of what it does so very straightforward built-in air separation critical how many jobs have problems with air that cause the pumps to shudder uh, shudder when the air hits the impeller of the pump the pump gets a thump the the impeller comes loose and over a period of time you find that systems that have air problems the pumps are being replaced over and over doesn't happen when there's no air in the system plus you don't have air trapping in reds it's just air and heating systems are the arch enemies so uh, you need to get rid of it from the system that's what this unit does and then it provides uniform flow opportunity for each of the zones to take away the heat and it provides the uniform temperature for each boiler to get at the coldest water in the system if you take from the bottom chamber or you can take a higher temperature from the middle chamber because it doesn't have the advantage of uh, of getting direct access to the coldest water so completely up to the designer to decide what to, what is going to do so the standard units come pre-insulated 25 mil inch thick insulation all around uh, very simple to remove for uh, testing or for uh, installation whatever hopefully you found that all very interesting i'm sorry it took a bit longer than what i hoped but uh, i've been trying to go as quickly as possible and we really have only skipped over uh, a lot of the things i could tell you about because it seriously is a very very interesting product i'd like to think that you would uh, take interest enough to read up some more on the thing if you have any questions please contact me 
Um, I'm contactable at info at energy awareness. Harry Ray is my name, R E A, uh, info at energy awareness.com. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate your time.